All right, we have the three biggest risers. Now we have the three biggest fallers. So we're just going to do a quick video here through three players that I think are falling. Actually, you want to buy one of them. So the first one is going to be Rashad Bateman. He's the hardest one to project. I mean, Rashad Bateman is honestly super incredibly tough to figure out what to do with because he's been injury prone. He is a rookie wide. He was a rookie wide receiver that basically lost his entire year and then lost his sophomore year as well. And so does he follow into the Kevin White category? Does he follow into a category of... Uh, just a player that cannot stay healthy. And when you look at Rashad Bateman, he's all over the place, but he's that 36th wide receiver. Um, but he's right around the area of like Calvin Ridley and Gabe Davis. I would rather have him over Gabe Davis. I'd rather have Calvin Ridley at this point, probably over. Actually, I would have rather have him over Rashad Bateman just due to the unknown. We don't know the quarterback situation as well. Um, but there's other wide receivers that I, I mean, Jahan Dotson's in that category. Mike Williams is in that ca category. The player that we're going to be talking about shortly is in that category. And so right now, Rashad Bateman's in a category where I'm like, yeah, you know what? I'm okay with potentially selling if you can get that top 35 value uh, out of him. I mean, he's 36. So if you can get that, if you can dump him for uh, an early second at this point, I, I'm okay with at this point in time in his career, uh, just shooting a shot at an early second, uh, saying that he was a, a first round pick in Dynasty and he just has been hurt and maybe you can get out from underneath him. And so that's kind of my stance from Rashad Bateman. He's hard to really project because really he, he hasn't done much. I mean, he had 59, 108, 59, 17, and 42 yards. I mean, he's okay, but I mean, really, you're going to need much more than that from uh, a wide receiver that we have an unknown, again, quarterback. He's still super young. So if you're a rebuilding team that can get him for, again, a lot lower than that, then go for it. But I mean, he could end up dipping his value even uh, a ton lower if this year ends up being, so he's, he's a very big wild card. If you can, again, buy him for a late second then I'm probably on board with buying him but if you can buy him for uh if, you, if it's an early second cost I'm just gonna stay away and I'll, I'll sell for that type of price the next one is DeAndre Hopkins which is right around that Rashad Bateman value 34 35 and so he's 30 years old he had a great year I mean you're talking uh, I, I'm on, on the buy train here for DeAndre Hopkins for the simple reason that he is again being devalued he's 30 he looked absolutely wonderful only a couple games where he had robust some of them were just absolutely amazing games if you look at he had four yards 60 79 87 91 98 159 103 and 36 i mean he had some high targeted 14 13 5 12 you get it he had some high targeted games here and and honestly if he goes to a different team why can't he follow into a a Devontae? Devante? Why am I blanking? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, uh, Devontae Adams. Uh, I, I had the name. I just I like just went blind blank. Why can't he follow into Adams' footsteps where he went to the Raiders and had a successful year? Hopkins could easily do that for a year for you. Uh, there has been no signs of him slowing down. Yes, he's been a little bit hurt. He had the PEDs. We'll see exactly what happens. But DeAndre Hopkins has actually been the biggest faller as of late. Uh, and that's probably just because of age. And I think that potentially well, he's 30.6. He'll be closer to that 31 mark. This is, again, a risk because you look at him and you look at Mike Evans and you look at some of these wide receivers going to the end. They only have a year or two left. But for a contending team, DeAndre Hopkins is the player that I'm, I'm still targeting. Again, you, it's all about value. If you can get him for that like late, that mid to late second, saying, "Hey, he's at, he's almost 31 years old," then go for it. If you can't, if he's going to cost you that early second, then I'm going to be a little bit. I, I would rather have him over Bateman. Uh, if, if you're a contending team, but I'm going to be a little bit more cautious and it's just going to, he's going to have to be that final piece that I need for that one year, 2023 jump. And just know that when he's 31.6 in 12 months here, he's going to even lose a lot more value. The last one is Tua Tunga Veloa. Uh, it's concussions. It's, it's just, it's pure injuries. Cause if you look at, he was 15th at QB, he was 21st overall. He, he did that with losing four games of the season. He lost a fourth of the season. Uh, he's 24. We really just don't know the extent of his concussion issues and injuries. But man, if this is, I, I, this is, I'm okay with buying him at this point, because if you look at where he is uh, quarterback wise, let me go to quarterback rankings here. I saw it, but I need to go back to it. 12th. Um, he's right around Trey Lance. I'd rather have Tua way over Trey Lance. I mean, he's a little bit above Kirk and above Daniel Jones. I'd rather have Tua. I know the injury history and everything like that, but I'd rather have Tua ahead of those couple players there. Um, and he's right by Kyler Murray. Honestly, Tua and, and Kyler Murray, I'd rather have Tua. Uh, Kyler Murray has just fallen off the map for me. He's going to lose DeAndre Hopkins. Maybe Marquise Brown stays around long enough. Rondell Moore is not a good type two or a, a wide receiver two on that team. That team seems to be a huge rebuild, and I don't know if I want 
that versus Tua is going to have Waddle and Hill for the next couple of years. That's going to be a super fun roster. We just need to make sure that he stays healthy. He's right around Dak, and I, I like Dak, and I, I think I, I would still rather have Dak over Tua. Um, Dak is again hasn't hit thir- or hasn't hit thirty yet. I don't believe. I think he's like twenty nine. Um, but I, Dak is. We'll see. Mike McCarthy made bomb. Dak Prescott here, but Tua Tagovailoa is definitely behind or definitely into that realm of categories with Dak, with Deshaun, if he's healthy. The big thing is concussions. Concuss- concussions are unknown, and he had a couple of them this year. Then one of them that again looked very nasty. So again, um, that is where I see some of these three players: Brashad Bateman, probably a sell; uh, DeAndre Hopkins buy in certain situations and two uh, definitely a buy especially if you're going to get him right around that Trey Lance price the Kirk Cousins price the Daniel Jones price at this point um he's just been moving down and maybe if he continues to keep moving down a little bit then that is a time they don't have a first round pick so their roster is probably not going to get better but they could have running back and if they get a Jameer Gibbs type or another pass catcher like a Zach um Charbonnet then that could be a potential good fit for Tua who can just dump off some passes and they already have had some good running backs that have come over from the Shanahan system into that system of Mike uh, McDaniel. So again, this is Marcus Dice with that. We'll see you soon for some more rookie content. Peace out. Take care.